This is the Transportation TV News Update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting. The legislation is called Fixing America's Surface Transportation, or FAST Act, a five-year, roughly $300 billion transportation authorization that advocates have been seeking for a decade. Bud Ride, Executive Director of the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, AASHTO, call the bill's passage momentous. Wright heads the association that on Capitol Hill represents all of the departments of transportation in the 50 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. We've been working on this for a long time, and this is something that we've been trying to achieve ever since I arrived at AASHTO, and we've now reached that point in time where the states are going to have some stability in funding, but not just stability. This bill actually offers some growth in funding levels. So this is a good deal for state DOTs. As with any piece of legislation, it's not perfect. There certainly are things that we wish could have been different, but on the whole, this is a bill that's going to make state DOTs better able to do the job that they intend to do every day. Current annual federal highway program funding is $41 billion. Under the FAST Act, highway funding will increase investment in fiscal year 2016 to $43.3 billion, a nearly 5.6 percent increase in the investment America makes to fix its aging and congested highways, bridges, and overpasses. Funding increases in fiscal years 2 through 5 will average about 2 percent. Current annual federal investment in the nation's transit programs is $10.7 billion. Under the FAST Act, transit funding grows in fiscal year 2016 to nearly $12 billion, a 10.2 percent increase. The average percentage increase in fiscal years 2 through 5 will also be roughly 2 percent. That's great news, says Wright, after years of federal funding uncertainty. When you don't know the resources that are going to be available, it's hard to say we're going to make a long-term commitment to a slate of projects. So, I mean, I think it really has resulted in not only the state DOTs being unable to make those long-term commitments, but also the construction industry is in a position where they're not investing in new people, in new equipment. Um, this is going to free up everybody to say, let's begin to think long-term again. Wright gives high praise to Senate EPW Chairman, Oklahoma Republican Senator James Inhofe, and the committee's ranking member, California Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer. Wright also thank House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee Chairman, Pennsylvania Republican Representative Bill Schuster, and the committee's ranking member, Peter DeFazio, for their leadership. We owe them a lot. Um, we've had an opportunity to work with them closely over the past several years. Um, they've listened to the concerns of state DOTs, and I think we see that well reflected in the legislation that's about to be enacted. ASHTO's Chief Operating Officer and Policy Expert Jim Tymon a former senior advisor to Chairman Schuster and staffer at the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, calls the FAST Act a victory. In a year where there hasn't been a lot of movement on major issues in Washington, that uh, Republicans and Democrats in the House and the Senate have come together to get a long-term transportation bill done. It's the first time in 10 years that they've gotten uh, a bill done that is of this length, the five-year transportation bill, and I think that's a a great victory for Congress, but also for the American people. The FAST Act ends a succession of temporary congressional extensions and threatened highway transit program shutdowns, due in part to the long-struggling Highway Trust Fund. For years, more revenue has flowed out of the HTF than has gone into it. It's a huge problem that Timon says the FAST Act won't fix. I think ideally most people in the transportation community would like to see this fully funded through transportation user fees, uh, but politically there wasn't the appetite to address that revenue spending imbalance uh, through increasing highway trust fund revenues. Uh, at the end of the day, we're happy to have the revenues from whatever source they come from, uh, but it isn't a long-term solution. Uh, we'll have to come back again in, in five or six years uh, and have and face a lot of the same questions that we were faced with this time. But Timon says the good news is that the FAST Act maintains many of the programs still being implemented from MAP 21, passed by Congress in 2012. And he says the FAST Act includes two new programs to deal with the growing issue of freight transportation. 
One of them is a formula program that goes back out to the states for states to choose projects that will benefit uh, the transportation of freight. Uh, and the other one is a discretionary program where the uh, administration will pick projects based on their merits. And, uh, and I think that's a positive outcome for this bill for, for freight transportation. Transportation advocates say that while the FAST Act isn't perfect, it will provide the investment needed to create thousands of jobs, relieve traffic congestion, improve safety, and give travelers more transportation options. It means that those transportation benefits that we know this program can provide are going to actually come to fruition. Um, this bill is a balanced bill. It not only increases highway funding, but it also increases public transportation investment as well. It provides funding for rail improvements. It's a balanced approach to making sure that we're not thinking about a particular mode of transportation, but about mobility and about options for the American public. To find out more about the FAST Act, visit Ashto's web portal at fast.transportation.org. I'm Tony Dorsey. Thanks for watching.